Hello, hello! I'm making this uh, sort of like series of new videos in which I'm examining the intrinsic value of companies and that is the intrinsic value of their respective stocks really. And um, I think that this is very, very relevant and useful for people who want to be having an idea of what is a fair price to pay for a company and specifically the stock price to buy the company for. And we have done it earlier for Shopify, I did that in a previous video, I'm adding a link to the description box below. But now we're gonna do it for Alibaba, a company that everybody is watching and uh, it's uh, very very popular right now in um, discussions among investors. So how, we're, how are we going to be doing this? There, there are multiple mechanisms and ways uh, to use formulas to use in order to calculate a company's potential uh, fair value as we call it, intrinsic value. I, the, you can use DCF models, which is like a discounted cash flow model, which I'm going to be doing in the future. It's a little bit more involved, but uh, uh, I'm creating software to do that for all of you. I'm going to be allowing access to this software when I finish uh, the creation of it. But currently I'm using a much, much simpler method, method that's still very, very useful and very, very valid. And what I'm doing is actually calculating the free cash flow of the company and giving it a multiple. And then from that multiple deducing how much I'm willing to pay today. Now, the, you may be wondering why we're using the free cash flow. Now, let's take a look first at the free cash flow statement here. I'm going back to the free cash flow statement and you will see here the free cash flow of the company. Why are we, are we using that as a, as a very, very important met metric for determining how much the, the company is worth? That's because the amount of cash that the company makes and especially the cash that the company uh, holds, which is the free cash flow, after exp some expenses like operating expenses, is um, what the company produces from its operations and what can be distributed to stockholders, basically, uh, if th that was distributed to stockholders. Because you may have heard the expression that an investment or any investment really is the present value of all future cash flows. You may have heard that. It's a very, very well-known phrase. But what does that mean? Sounds confusing. Why are we talking about future and present? Why all that uh, fuss over here? Now we're talking about future and present value because $10 today, 2021, 2022 actually, is not the same as, as $10 10 years from now. Because $10 10 years from now are going to be worth maybe $7 in today's value. And this is what we're calling the present value of money and the future value of money. So the present value of $1 is $1, but the present the future value of uh, $1 may be uh, 70 cents in 10 years. And so the present value that would be 70 cents of that dollar in 10 years from now. This is why we're talking about present value and future value. And so we can build a model where we're calculating that uh, the company could be making 30 billion in 2021 and uh, maybe 150 billion in 2031. And so we, using that model, we can discount the, the cash flows back to the present, back to today, and actually discover how much we're willing to pay for that company. It's a little bit of a more involved process. I'm not doing it in this, in this video because it can be a little bit complex. I'm going to be doing it in the future and I have created a video where I'm actually explaining it. I'm also going to leave a link in the description box below if you are willing to take a look. But for now, I'm going to use a much, much simpler method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the average free cash flow that the company is making per year for the last five years. How am I going to do that? I'm getting my calculator here I'm, and I'm doing $17 billion from this year plus uh, 17, the second year, it's about, right? Plus 21, plus 29, plus 24. And this gives us uh, a total five-year free cash flow of $108 billion. Now, I'm going to divide that by five, which is the years that we calculated here. And I'm going to get a, a value of $21.6 billion on average is what the company is making per year really on average in terms of free cash flow. Now, we're going to give the company a multiple for its free cash flow. Uh, typically, we use a multiple of 15 or 20. We're willing to pay more when the company is growing and Alibaba is growing and uh, is a, obviously a massive company, but still growing a lot. And so I'm definitely willing to pay to give it a multiple of 20 for sure, even more, maybe even 25 for you know for buying Alibaba. So I'm going to be a little bit conservative and give it a 20 here, which I think is very, very fair. So I'm going to multiply that by 20. And I'm getting a market cap, an expected market cap of $432 billion that I feel the company should be worth based on the free cash flow it's making, times 20, which is the multiple I'm willing to pay for it. 
And so now the current market cap of the company is 321 billion. And it actually seems to be decreasing today. There were some news about Alibaba. It's potentially going a little bit lower. Uh, news not to be too worried about really, but okay. So we are having a company that has a, a market cap right now of $433 billion, which is what we're willing to pay for it. It's actually less right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the overview because we do know, we do know how much we want the company to be worth but we don't know how much a share should be worth for us to buy. And this is what we're going to calculate now. We're going to divide this value, this $432 billion, divide it to the outstanding shares, which is the, the total amount of shares of the company. So we're going to divide it by 271. And we're going to get a value of 159.4, let's say $160. And so this means that if we give a, a, a free cash flow multiple of 20 for Alibaba, we are actually willing to pay at least one uh, at most $160 today to buy Alibaba. And uh, currently Alibaba is sitting at 117 it looks like uh, when the market opens uh, soon. It's about it's going to open about 40 40 minutes from now. And so you see that uh, even at this current valuation the stock price the stock is actually undervalued based on the free cash flow that the company makes times 20, which is insane. I mean uh, a lot of the companies that you're going to be finding in the stock market and you have uh, you have seen that in my previous videos if you have watched any of my videos are trading at multiples of like 50 or 60 you can find tesla trading at a multiple of like 150 if not more so <laughs> a multiple of 20 here or 15 which is the actual multiple that is uh, alibaba sitting is uh, that alibaba is sitting on right now more than likely uh, is very very low and uh, this points to a very very cheap company and so uh, currently, at any point bit below $160, we should definitely be a buyer of Alibaba. And I would actually recommend that uh, uh, people would be a buyer at, a living, at an even higher valuation, to tell you the truth. I'd probably be a buyer at 180 for instance. I probably wouldn't want to go more than 200, 200. Um, there the risk is a little bit more. But still, I mean, uh, I feel that the multiple of 20 or 25 is absolutely fine for a company like Alibaba here, especially after it has been beaten down so much. So hopefully that gives you an idea on how to use a very, very quick and effective way to calculate how much you should be paying a company today based on the amount of money that the company is making, because remember, the company the amount that the company is making the amount of money that the company is making is the end all be all at the very end i mean growth is very important very very important but uh, that it only matters when the company is making money or is about to make money you know you can have a company that's growing and growing and growing its sales and growing and growing and growing its losses so you don't want to see that you want to, the company to actually be making some money because let's just say that you wanted to buy a house and the house cost you uh, $500,000 and you wanted to buy this house as an, as an investment in, or in order to rent it out. Would you be willing to rent it out for 100 bucks a, a year, a month? That doesn't make sense. You would never make your money back. You may be willing to rent it for $3,000 a month. And so there is always a point where cash is enough to sustain and uh, uh, point to an investment potentially being a successful one. And if it goes below that threshold, then it may be an unsuccessful one. And so you as an investor want to be finding this uh, threshold and actually pay less in order to get a very fair investment and, and possibly an undervalued investment. And this is what we are understanding and realizing here with, uh, in Alibaba's case. And if you do it with multiple companies and multiple stocks in the current stock market, you will, you will have difficulty find, finding undervalued ones, I'm telling you that. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, you had a good time watching it. Uh, if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and to take a look at this video that I made earlier and it's about Facebook. Thanks for watching and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye bye.